Hi guys, Jill here. I wanted to share a card with you that I made using some Ulta New stamps as well as the Danzai Tombi watercolors. First, um, here's the set. I used the 36 set, although I think the colors I used are mostly in um, the regular set. So um, I used, um, I'm not sure if this is the order I'm taking them out in, but I used um, 53, 64, 43, 34, and 10. And I know I take one of them out later. Um, I set up three different containers of water and um, I do attach my watercolor paper to some boards. Um, the one I end up using is just a black chalkboard um, that I found at Dollar Tree. I also use um, some clipboards that I have my husband take the clip part off of. Um, I also um, am showing you I use my silver um, brand um, black velvet watercolor brushes. I use both the number four and the number six. So I spray my watercolors and then I'm using the um, piece that comes over the watercolors as my palette. So right here I'm mis mixing some red and some white and um, I'm just putting it over a puddle of water. I kind of put this into three different sections and you'll see that. Um, I'm putting down some pink, some light yellow, and some light blue on the background. And so I'm just looking for the right pink. And um, I just want a light wash. And so that's pretty much where I go. And so um, I use the number six brush for this part. So here I'm just putting down some yellow. And again, I'm going with some light washes. I'm going to come back over this again um, for that second um, look for the more splotchy look that I love about watercolors. And um, so again, I'm not going for a smooth look. I'm going for a really splotchy look. And so here's the blue. The blue, I blended um, the blue and a little bit of the white, and I believe I added a little, little bit too much white. I'm almost off screen here. Sorry, guys. Now, I am using Strathmore 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Um, I really like using this, it's a nice heavy paper. I do tape it down to the backgrounds, but I don't always need that, but I do like doing that. Um, it's just extra protection, really, and I always find I don't want the paper warping, um, but, you know, when you're applying a lot of water, it's really helpful to have a tape down like that. And I find that these boards are more than enough. Um, even just a piece of chipboard would probably be helpful. So I'm going to use my heat tool because you can almost see here it's a little warped in the center. Um, I blot up a little bit of the extra. I want to speed up the drying time. I didn't find that there was a lot of an advantage to using the the natural drying process. Um, sometimes I really do like the natural drying process, but here I didn't find any advantage to it. So here's where I come in and I just kind of um, just lay down the color. I didn't put a lot of, of thought into it. I find sometimes with watercolor when I'm looser, I get a lot better results. So, um, I come in a little bit darker with this layer and I don't even think I come in with a second layer on the blue. So that's going to be my background. Again, I'm drawing it just to make sure all the colors are where I want them to be. And so, oh, I do come in with some blue. 
so um, again just lay down the color don't think about it too much remember your colors are going to dry back some they're going to be lighter and um, don't be afraid to go in there with a paper towel and blot them off and that adds to the look so I dry them off I'm happy with where they're at and so I dried them off and I set that aside so now I'm going to work on the flowers this is the peony bouquet set from Ulta New and I'm mainly working with the outlines so this is the big flower and I'm going to use my mini misty and I'm using it with that pad in there and this is some um, extra pieces of that same Strathmore 140 pound cold press paper and especially because it's watercolor paper I really want that extra protection in the misty um, if you don't have a MISTI, maybe a um, stamp positioner to help you. But um, if not, you know, just get the best impression you can. I'm using my Onyx Black Versifying Ink Pad and just stamping the outline. And I did end up stamping it three times. And that's what gave me the really good impression. So once again, I'm coming in and I'm wetting the colors. And I'm going to work on a smaller palette here to give the pink. Um, I transferred some of the pink over um, from the other palette. So that's why it seems so pink right away. Um, but I want a nice light pink and instead of using the background stamp I just wanted to use that same pink that was on the background paper that I had used and then when I gave you the colors in the beginning and I said I didn't use them all right away that's because I had already told you this green that I used so there's my kind of murky water I'd been using <laughs> And um, I just use little shot glasses from the Dollar Tree. Um, some of them were the little red Solo Cups ones and some of them were the clear ones. So here I'm just putting a layer over it um, from that color I went with. And so that same color, I'm going to go over the smaller flower. And I had stamped that same one with the Misty, and I'd also stamped the leaves. Again, just to keep the color the same. And these I didn't keep in the lines. It's just such a light color. Now, with the leaves, I do keep those in the lines because I am going to cut with a little bit of a border. So, I don't want that to show outside um, but with the pink it's not really gonna matter so um, with the green I just put a light coating on there and then I'm just going to um, let some of it pool because I don't want it to dry with harsh lines and I'll even put it with the stem what I love about these um, brushes is that even though they're nice big brushes, they have tiny little fine points. So I can get really tiny little details with them and I just love that about them. And so I am so glad that so many people recommended them and I finally got them and they're really worth it. So if you're looking for a really good brush, I believe these are them. Okay, so I'm finishing this up. Then I'm going to cut them out. You don't have to watch this. It's kind of painful to watch me do. <laughs> oh, no, I don't cut them out quite yet. So I come in with the um, Rosebud Color Memento. 
and I stamp the detail layer of the peony bouquet. I only did the most detailed layer. I didn't do the next two of um, each of the two flowers. And I chose not to do the other details. Um, oh, and look, there's a cat. Surprise, surprise. Um, always is in my videos. And um, I just chose to do just the one detail. And again, here's where my Misty really came in. I had to stamp each one a few times. Again, with the watercolor paper. It, it just has such deep lines in it that it really came in handy. Okay, so this is where I cut them out. I decided on my layout, and that's where I came in with the Misty, and I added my sentiment. Now these two um, sentiments were from two different Ulta New sets. And I will list those below. And I used the Onyx Black ink, my Versafine. And I um, spaced those out and set them where I wanted them. Okay, so now I'm coming in with my Pilot Silver Paint Pen. And that's the medium tip. And I'm running it along the edges. And as you can see, I'm putting more pressure on the background paper than the actual paper. And that's how it's so easy to do. Then I'm going to, that's the scissors I use to cut them out with the little edge. And then I'm going to place everything where I want it. And here's where you can see how the paper, um, the background paper, really dried much lighter. Okay, so I'm using my um, Ranger Matte Medium. I love this medium because it dries clear and it doesn't leave marks if some of it should seep out. And I'm using the Ranger Precision Point on it, that gray nib, and um, I'm loving it. So um, then I'm also using my EK6S tweezers. And that just helps me get everything right where I want it to be. So I'm going to place both of the leaves and then the smaller flower. And um, then I'm going to um, get those right where I need them. And then I'm going to put the foam tape behind the peony blossom. So um, that's... Don't believe I need the tweezers after this, but the tweezers just, you know, kind of help you keep your fat fingers out of there. So you can see where something's actually going to go. And oh yeah, I use one of my, um, my mounts. Because <laughs> I don't seem to use them as much as I used to now that I have the Misty. <laughs> so, you know, you got to keep them in use. They were expensive. But... Yeah, they've paid for themselves over and over. So there's the foam tape, and as you can see, I love to use a lot of foam tape. I don't want any gaps where anything might dip. Oh, I do use those. Okay, so now it's time for, oh, I leave it out because it's time for sequins. I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh. I got that out. Um, the Sparkling Clear Mix. And this is the mix with all the different sizes in it. Um, when I got these, I didn't realize how clear these were. Um, man, they're clear. So um, I just dump a few out in this little tray and I pick out some. And um, I think I might have gone a little overboard on them, but no problem. So I picked out the ones that I wanted and once again... I went with that matte medium with the precision tip and um, again it was really nice because they don't it doesn't it dries matte 
and it doesn't leave marks on your paper and that's why it's good for mixed media as well as things like using it for sequence um, it's just great all around glue so I'm gonna place all of these using my tweezers and um, then once that's done it's gonna go on a black card base I use the nice thick 110 pound card base and that black really sets this all off nicely um, so um, like I said the most painful hard part to watch was me um, picking out these sequins because I, that always seems to be the hardest part is that last little detail isn't it and I just I don't know it, it just took me a while so um, there's the completed card I love how it turned out and as you saw the one I started with was an anniversary card this was a graduation card it's just a great all-around card so um, below you can find all the supplies I use as well as on my blog so um, as always I if you have any questions please let me know and um, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and of course um, thanks for stopping by and have a great day